how to determine how to determine the formula of a hydrated salt okay so if you have a hydrated salt like this hydrated salt magnesium bromide with some water trapped in the crystals and X is a whole number but we just don't know what it is is it one two three four five how much water is trapped in the crystals you need to be able to, to work out the formula be able to work out X to find out how many um, moles of water are trapped remember this is also called water of crystallization and you've got water trapped in the crystals okay so now the way we do this is we do an experiment to find out uh, the amount of water trapped and therefore the formula all we do is we get some hydrated salt and we weigh it okay we get some hydrated salt and we weigh it okay and the mass say let's pretend the mass is 7.30 grams now in chemistry whenever you weigh something you must put two decimal places okay every mass is two decimal places and when we say the mass of the hydrated salt we mean the mass of all of it that's the hydrated salt we mean the mass of all of it okay then what we do is we put it in a little crucible in a small crucible and then we heat it up okay you, you don't heat it too strong because you don't want to decompose it you heat it strong enough to remove the water from the crystals but not strong enough to decompose it so you heat in a little crucible then you let it cool and then you weigh it again and what you're left with is the anhydrous salt no water because you've removed all the water so if the if you did the calculation maybe the mass would come out as that okay and this is how you work out the formula of a hydrated salt okay so the first thing you're going to do and remember that remember the anhydrous salt has no water so that's the anhydrous salt okay then the mass of water the mass of water is you just take them away to find the mass of water so if you take those two numbers away then we have got 2.70 grams is the mass of water okay now the method we use to calculate the formula is the empirical formula method we take the two columns the empirical formula method we're trying to find the molar ratio of water to magnesium bromide okay first thing we do is we write the mass underneath so the mass of water is 2.70 grams the mass of the anhydrous salt which remember is this one here the mass of the anhydrous salt that one there 4.60 grams then we divide by the MR so we divide by the MR and the MR of water is 18 two hydrogens and oxygen the MR of magnesium bromide is 184.1 basically what we're doing here is we're just finding the moles moles is mass over MR that's what we're doing finding the moles and you do those calculations and the numbers you get 0 0.15 to 0 0.025 then you divide by the smallest, divide by the smallest number, which is 0 0.025, which is the same method for empirical formula. Then you get 1, 2, when you do that calculation, you get 6. So for every 1 magnesium bromide, there are 6 waters. And therefore the formula is MgBr2 dot 6 waters. And you've now found the formula of the hydrated salt. Okay? Right, there's another thing we've got to be able to do. Another method. So let's get a clean piece of paper. So, okay. So what if uh, the formula that they give you is something like this? What if they say the hydrated salt is MSO4.7 waters? So we know the water this time. We just don't know what the metal is. This is the metal. It could be 
um, calcium, magnesium sulfate, iron sulfate, copper sulfate, zinc sulfate, we don't know what it is and you have to work it out. Now the experiment is exactly the same. You take your hydrated salt, you put it in a crucible and you heat it up. Don't decompose it, heat it up just to drive off the water. Okay, and that's the mass. And then uh, you let it cool and you weigh the crucible and the solid at the end and you're left with the anhydrous salt. You've driven off all the water. And that is 5.05, remember two decimal places. So that's the hydrated salt, all of it. And hydrous salt is just the metal sulfate. And the calculation, you find the mass of water, just the same. You take those two numbers away, subtract them, to get to your mass of water. Okay, now the calculation is different though. When you're finding X water, you do one calculation. When you're finding the metal, you do another type of calculation. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to write a chemical equation. You started with, and we started with this hydrated salt, and it's a solid. You put it in your crucible um, and you weigh it. Then you heat it up and you drive off the water, there's seven waters and you're left with the anhydrous salt solid. Anhydrous salt, state symbols are really important. Now, we've got the mass of water here, the mass of water. So I'm gonna write it underneath the water. I'm gonna keep it really organized. Okay, the mass of water. And I'm gonna work out the moles of water. Remember that moles equals mass over MR, okay? Remember that MR is exactly the same as molar mass. It's just that molar mass has got units, mass per mole, but they're the same number, they're the same number. Okay, so your water is 18, 16 and two. So you do mass over molar mass to give you the moles. And when you do that calculation, it comes out at 0 0.219 moles and that's the moles of water. So if that's the mass moles of water, what's the moles of MSO4? What is that gonna be? Now we need to use the STOE, to do this, we need to use the stoichiometry of the chemical equation. Okay, and that basically means we need to use the stoichiometry of the chemical equation just make basically means the big numbers at the front at the front of each chemical formulae um, it's just the molar ratio the molar ratio so for every seven waters there's one there's one MSO4 we don't bother writing it but there is a one there okay remember mole is just an amount of substance so if there are 0 0.219 moles of uh, water, the moles, the amount of MSO4 is a seventh. That, that, that's seven times, this is a seventh of the water. And that's how you work out the moles of MSO4. So you do that calculation, and it comes out to three significant figures. I'm only writing down three significant th figures. But when you do this calculation, you've got to carry, on your calculator, you have to carry the whole, um, the whole number through the calculation. But I'm only writing down three significant figures. Okay, so moles equals mass. Remember we're talking about the anhydrous salt here. We're only talking about the anhydrous salt over the MR of the anhydrous salt. You've got the mass of the anhydrous salt where is it? There it is there, 5.05. So we're going to write that in the top, 5.05. We just need to, grams, we just need to rearrange this equation. So it's divide by MR, because what we want is MR equals. We're trying to find MR equals. So we divide by MR, so we bring it to the top. Let's divide, when you take it to the other side, you times, you just do the opposite on the other side. So it's going to be that equals 5.05 grams. 
that's times, take it to the other side, do the opposite. MR is mass over moles. Okay, when you do that calculation, mass over moles, you get 161.50. That is the MR of the um, uh, anhydrous salt. You just need to do a bit more calculation. That's the MR of the anhydrous salt. So we know the MR of the anhydrous salt is 161.50. So that's the metal and sulfur, which is 32.1, the AR, that's the AR of sulfur, the relative atomic mass, and four oxygens equals 161.50. So that's the metal, and when you add those up, it comes to 96.1, when you add these two, these two together here, 96.1, okay? equals 161.5. So we take this to the other side, do the opposite when you take it to the other side, 61.5, take away 96.1, so the metal equals, when you do that calculation, the metal equals 65.4. Then you look on the periodic table and you see which metal is uh, 65.4 so you look and you see okay well which metal is 65.4 and 65.4 is zinc so this metal must be zinc and therefore the formula of the hydrated salt is zinc sulfate and seven waters okay so there are two ways to calculate to determine the formula of a hydrated salt which way you use depends on what you're trying to find. If you are trying to find the metal, metal, then you use this way with the formula, uh, with the equation. If you're trying to find the moles of water, the number of water, then you use the empirical formula method. Okay, I'm going to give you two questions to try yourself, and then you bring them to the lesson, bring the uh, notes and the answers to these two questions to the lesson. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two questions to try yourself. Um, can you find it? Okay, here goes. So this one here, you need to find the formula of MSO4 dot five waters. Okay, this is the question. And the information I'm gonna give you is the mass of the hydrated salts equals um, 12.23 grams okay the mass of the uh, anhydrous salts at the end is um, 7.82 and you have to determine the formula okay that's the first question the second question that I want you to do is from a second year exam paper a bit harder but you can do it you can do it okay it's a bit more complicated as well so I'm just going to write this you have to copy this down carefully CH3 COO bracket round it to copper square bra another bracket we do square because we can't do round again we do square brackets two of them and CUOH2 all of that, all of that, dot x water, okay? And you've got to find um, the, um, the formula. So you've got to find out the amount of water, okay? And the information that they give you is that they say that uh, after, so after heating, after gentle heating, there is 83.7% of anhydrous salt left over at the end. And that's all the information I'm going to give you. And you need and all of this is the anhydrous salt, all of it. All of that part there, up into that dot there. Okay? And you need to find the formula and find the uh, the moles of water. Okay? So those two questions bring that along with your notes to the lesson on Monday.